Man, I'm glad we did not turn around because of the rain. My buddy Clay and I decided to make it a weekend camping trip and head down to West Virginia to check out Seneca Rocks and Canaan Loop Road. Canaan? Canaan? I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, but it's a nearby trail for off-roading. And we also wanted to check out the available dispersed camping spots there. From Columbus, I had originally planned a straight shot down Highway 33 to get to Seneca Rocks, but due to some road construction, we ended up taking Highway 50 over to the Appalachian Highway, which is Highway 32, and brought that into the Seneca Rock area instead. We made it into Seneca Rocks just as the rain had began to stop, and we're greeted by a pretty cool rainbow. I took a little detour to search for the pot of gold at the end of this to see if I could replace some of that uh, gas money that I used down here, but no luck. We did see some pretty cool rocks, though. One of the things I love about taking these road trips is getting to stop in small towns and meeting real people, eating in their restaurants, shopping in their stores. In cities, we seem to get too caught up in the daily grind to remember that there's a great big world out there full of small towns, regular people, mom and pop stores, unique shops and restaurants where you can still actually get an honest home cooked meal. I would much rather spend my money in small towns and small businesses over any huge corporation any day of the week. In about 1761 is when settlers first began arriving to this area, which back then was called the Mouth of Seneca. Since it lies at the confluence of Seneca Creek and the North Fork of the South Branch of the Potomac River, for some of our nation's first people, more specifically the Seneca, Tuscarora, and Algonquin nations, this area was often used as a route for both trade and for war. It came to be known as the Great Indian Warpath. You'll thank me later for speeding up this footage. I was trying to get in behind the rocks to see if I could get a point to launch the drone and be able to film up and over the rocks. But unfortunately, this road was marked no parking the whole way. And as you can see, there weren't many spots. Uh, most of them that were small turnouts were just made for pulling over and letting out climbers, it appeared. And the end of the road was marked private property anyway. For those unfamiliar with Seneca Rocks, let me tell you a little bit about how this area was formed. These rocks were uplifted about 200 million years ago. This crag, as it is referred to, was folded through geological processes and uplifted to 90 degrees. You can see the striations that run vertically through the rocks, which tells you this area laid flat in prior times. These rocks used to be grains of sand that laid flat during the Silurian period. In that period, which was roughly 400 to 450 million years ago, this area was an ocean, and these rocks were merely sand in the shoal of that ocean, or the shallow water. Time and pressure turned that sand into these rocks made of Tuscarora quartzite, which is known for its resistance to erosion. And in the millions of years that followed, the surrounding sedimentary rock, which was not resistant to erosion, fell away. And today, we have Seneca Rocks. That carries me to the next segment, which is the foot trail up to the top. We wanted to get to the observation deck, which is built, and you can see in the red circle here, up near the top of the rocks. And it was a long trek, about a thousand vertical feet. I'm not really sure how many miles it is 
but it is switchbacks. Switchback after switchback after switchback to get up to the top. I think it took us about an hour and a half to make our way up there completely. I think it was about a 30 minute to a 35 minute trip downhill, of course. Once we were at the top though, the uh, scene did not disappoint us. It was a little ways to the actual top of the rocks, which you just saw marked there with the uh, warning sign, but the view from up here was pretty amazing. Um, I was a little sketchy to get right to the edge of the handrail there, but uh, hey, heights are not my uh, heights are not my friend. At any rate, we made our way back down the hill. Like I said, it only took us about a third of the amount of time to get down as it did to get up. But still, it was a little tiring. thought about making our way to Seneca Caverns. Well, we did make our way to the caverns. We, we didn't actually go on the tour and go into the caverns, but we did uh, drive back to the entry point uh, to the to the store where the, the tours are scheduled. Um, this was one of the most beautiful drives ever. Uh, this is called Germany Valley, and it had such remarkable views on the side of all this just completely open farmland, homes, churches, towns, just amazing views, especially on a bright sunny day like this. After a long day of walking and driving, it was time to get back to the campsite and sit around and listen to all of the creatures of the night making the noise that makes it so much easier to sleep for some reason. We didn't bother with a campfire because, yeah, it was about 88 degrees and certainly didn't need one. next day we left and started making our way to Canaan Loop or Cannon Loop or Canaan Loop or however you say it road this was another beautiful drive through the mountainous countryside closing in on the area of Blackwater Falls State Park now when we got to the area of Canaan Loop Road, I followed Google Maps, which I think actually took me in what some people would consider backwards. This road here, uh, I think most people usually exit onto this road. They enter onto the state park road, uh, state park entrance, uh, or the entrance nearest to the state park, and they would be meeting me head on this way. But after that short paved section, we were on dirt road and forgive me I'm just trying to decrease the amount of boredom for you this is just a dirt road with some gravel uh, we had to share the road with bicyclists uh, 
that were I'm not sure if they were competing in some type of event or whether they were just out enjoying a bike ride but a number of them uh, were on the road especially they're closer to what would normally be the end but was the beginning for us this road uh, was actually pretty long I think the road is 18 miles um, or 18 and a half from start to finish but it certainly seems like a lot longer because the road becomes rough in certain areas and you really have to be careful of rocks and deep ruts and uh, you know mud puddles that you can't see into you don't want to go flying through and hit a great big rock and screw up your suspension so at any rate we made our way back uh, as quickly as we could to get from the gravel road to an area that was a little more mm, off-roady should you say In the beginning of this trail, I certainly didn't see anything too challenging, as at least for a truck or a Jeep or any other type of high clearance vehicle. But as we got further back into the trail, there were some pretty good shelf roads, as you can see here. Uh, some markers that we had to go uh, go around or be you know kind of careful when you pass by. They were looked like they were spots that had slid on prior occasions and marked so that um, you'd be careful going around them. The trail uh, quickly turned a little more rocky. Um, about four to five miles in and became very narrow. So if you were wondering how narrow is the trail? Well I would say that you don't want to be on this if you are super concerned about nature's pinstriping but it wasn't anything, uh, we didn't encounter anything that wouldn't, you know, quote unquote, buff out. <laughs> but uh, I think more side-by-sides use this trail than full-width vehicles do, at least from the looks of it. It is pretty narrow in some spots. And even though the mud puddles at first made me a little uneasy, it wasn't after I passed maybe the first or second one and realized that the bottoms of all of these were pretty rocky so you didn't really have to worry about getting stuck in slime even if it was a fairly large puddle it was just rocks at the bottom as we made our way further along the trail we actually had found a lot of uh, great dispersed camping spots and one that I wanted to check out was uh, across this very shallow creek and I've seen some other videos this creek was way, had way more water in it. Um, right now, even though it, it had just rained and I'm not sure what the weather had been prior to our trip down here, but it doesn't look like the area has gotten much rain recently because some of the other videos I've seen uh, where vehicles are crossing this, it's way higher than it is right now. But uh, this was a, a very simple, very simple water crossing. I mean, it's this actually water didn't even come up over my my uh, the rims of my my truck Drop a comment down below and tell me if you can figure out what this is. Found it stuck to the side of the truck bed and it's some kind of weird bug. It was time to make our trek back across this little water crossing and head back to the main trail. We still had a good I would estimate four to five miles left 
uh, if we wanted to exit this around the state park area where we probably should have entered it. We also found this cool little caterpillar along the way. wonder what it will be later. What a difference a day makes. Yesterday it was bright and sunny, and this was much more picturesque. Today it was dull, a little bit windy and cloudy. But I want to come back here in the fall. Remember to travel, folks. Our time here is short. We're born and raised and live our lives. We grow older, then we grow old. Every moment meaning more and more. Just as time gives, it also takes. It takes everything from us in trade. It gives us opportunities to learn, to grow, to love. But sooner or later, it wipes the slate clean. Every love, every life, every friend, every foe. Each having their own time and sharing in ours. But nothing gets to stay forever.